disconnection, a lack of connection. Now, I'm not one to point fingers or place blame, but a big reason, a big part for this disconnection in today's world has a lot to do with the advancement of technology, smartphones, these apps, and these social media platforms that almost everybody uses today. And when we connect with people over these phones, apps, platforms, we might just be connecting. And I say it like that because is it really connecting with another individual? Are we really diving beneath the surface level and getting to know somebody or getting to interact with somebody on a deep, deep level? And don't get me wrong, these platforms, these apps, these smartphones, technology has done amazing work. There are a ton of benefits for them in today's society. They help us get the word out about an issue or can mobilize people for a protest of some sort. And when used correctly, they are quite beneficial. At the same time, with a lot of tools, there's the benefits, but at the same time, there's also the harm. There's the negative, the bad that could come along with it if used in that manner. So when we are trying to connect with somebody or interact with somebody over an app, a social media platform, even just texting, sometimes you have to really take a step back and think, am I truly connecting with this person? Am I diving deep? Am I really fully 100% present? And I'm guilty of this sometimes too. It's easier to text because you can be doing 10 other things at the same time and not fully devoting all of your attention to this person. So this concept of disconnection has been magnified by some of these technologies and social media platforms because people might be deceived or tricked into thinking they're really connecting with somebody when it's a lot of surface level stuff that can be seen as superficial. To be completely honest, I had a thought of where this conversation, this talk was going to go, the direction that it was uh, going to follow, but I got kind of sidetracked on a tangent when I was talking about this disconnection, which is perfectly fine because that is a major problem in today's society. And when you think about the disconnection, you have to think about, well, how do we get back towards connection and connecting with another human being? And that's possible sometimes through these technologies but what we lack is that human-to-human -human connection a lot of times with our busy lives, with any excuse that we can come up with to not put ourselves out there to connect and interact with other human beings. And that connection, that human-to-human -human connection is extremely important. And what I wanted to talk about from the beginning but got sidetracked on was this concept of the power of a hug and that's the ultimate human to human connection because yes we can connect with another person by sitting down in front of them and talking looking them in the eye and really being 100 percent present but at the same time this concept of a hug and the power that it holds is amazing.
the power of a hug goes way beyond the physical body. Research has shown that when two people hug, it stimulates the vagus nerve, which increases the release of oxytocin that has this relaxation effect on the parasympathetic nervous system. So it trickles down and it lowers your heart rate, it relaxes you, and it reduces the stress levels that are associated with cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine. So when you think or you might have thought that a hug was just a physical activity, it goes way beyond that. It goes way deeper, no pun intended. There's a lot more going on than just the physical act. The, the chemistry of your body is changing just from a hug, just from that physical contact of hugging somebody. That's amazing. We don't, or at least I didn't for quite some time, actually think about that. I mean, why would you? You want to hug somebody, so you hug and you might feel better, but you don't understand why. But there's legitimate scientific evidence out there that is telling us that the power of a hug is amazing and it can do amazing things. I really didn't understand the power of a hug for quite some time. The first time that I really was introduced to how powerful a hug could be was my first recovery meeting in Narcotics Anonymous. And I'll never forget this. I walked down these steps and there was someone standing at the front door who's the greeter. And he opened up his arms and I was like, okay. <laughs> and he said, we hug here. So he gave me a hug and he said to me, welcome home. I'll never forget that because it was such a genuine heartfelt hug and I felt it in that moment I felt like I was home and I felt the power of a hug and those words and that feeling have stuck with me up until this day and I truly truly understood how powerful a hug could be how if somebody wasn't having the best day or was feeling down or sad or defeated, how a hug, just a, I don't want to say simple, but because the act can be simple, but just the act of a hug, just one hug can turn someone's life around, can change their attitude, their perspective and make them think feel and understand that everything is going to be okay and that blew my mind that a hug could do that that the power of a hug of two people hugging can do that and when you think about it and really focus on the act of a hug if done correctly what's in contact it's their chest so if their chests are in contact, what else is in contact? Their hearts. Their hearts are literally in contact with one another and they feel the heartbeat. Their hearts are beating together. And that can have profound effects, especially if the hug lasts 20 seconds. It's been proven that when hugs last that amount of time, 20 seconds, they can make the people healthier, they can make them happier, they can reduce stress. But I was reading somewhere that most hugs are less than 10 seconds. And I would uh, argue that a lot of times they're less than five, maybe even two or three seconds. And that's not to say that a quick hug, you know, one, two, three second hug isn't beneficial. 
there's power in that hug. But if we take the time, if we take 20 seconds, 20 seconds to really hug another person, then the benefits are astonishing. And it's been proven. You can change somebody's attitude. You can change somebody's outlook from a hug. And when it's a real, genuine, heartfelt hug that you're present for, you're there in that moment hugging that person. It's just amazing. I I can't think of another word. There's plenty out there, but it's just an amazing feeling. And it's an amazing act. And the power that that hug holds is just something that a lot of people don't really think about. They just think a hug is a hug, is a hug, is a hug. But it's not. It's way deeper than that. There is power in that hug. And we have to understand that. Because we can do so much good. We can affect so many people's lives in a good way and affect change and create change just from a hug. I know everybody, for the most part, has busy lives. We all do. We all have a lot going on with a lot of responsibilities. We have to be certain places at certain times. I understand that. But I'm talking about 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Think about that. I'm not going to do the math right now, but what's 20 seconds out of a 24-hour period in a day? <laughs> it's, I bet that it's way less than 1% of the day. You can check that and let me know if I'm correct or not, but I'm pretty sure. So we have the time. It's making it a priority. It's being mindful that the hug that you give somebody else and that you receive has power in it. And we want to be present and we want to really feel the hug and we want the other person to feel our hug to them. So be mindful, be conscious, be aware, be present the next time you give somebody a hug. It doesn't matter who it is. If it's a family member, a child, a coworker, anybody. If you're choosing to engage in a hug, really hug them. And some might say, oh, well, you know, say I go out to a, you know, a social gathering or a bar and I see a friend and I hug and we hug for 20 seconds and people are like, <laughs> what are they doing? They're hugging for so long. No, you're not. <laughs> It's just that a lot of other people are conditioned to hug for a lot shorter period of time. And they're not used to seeing people hug for 20 seconds to really hug. But I bet that if those people would start to hug or be hugged for 20 seconds or a little bit longer than what they've been hugging for, then they would realize, oh, they're onto something. There's power in that hug. There's amazing benefits from the length of that hug. It makes me feel good. It makes me happy. I don't feel as stressed right now. I'm not as anxious and wound up. It's just, I'm gonna say it again, it's just amazing. And I really would ask you, really suggest that you give that a shot. Try to hug the next person for longer than you've done before. Try it for five seconds, try it for 10 seconds. See how it feels. I guarantee you that (laughs) it'll feel better and better. It'll make you feel better and better and the other person even better. So there's only benefits. There's nothing wrong. There's no negative side effects of hugging (laughs) and that power in the hug here it comes again is amazing (laughs) so I had an idea today I had a focus of what I really wanted to talk about but it seems like it kind of
didn't go from point A to point B. It kind of went from point A to B up here, C down here. It kind of didn't take the path that I thought it would. But that's okay because it's all connected. <laughs> no pun intended again, but <laughs> it's all connected because a lot of people today in the world and society are disconnected from social media, apps, smartphones, and they lack connection and they lack human connection. They lack human contact. And there is power in human contact, especially hugs. The power of a hug is limitless sometimes. It can do so much good. And we need to move away from these disconnecting factors in our life, like social media and phones and stuff. Yes, they are integral tools and they're important and they do a lot of good, but at the same time, we need to not use them as a crutch all the time. We need to have that human to human connection. We need to be able to look somebody in the eyes and hug them if they need a hug because you might change their day. You might help them make it through that day. And that's the power of the hug. Give it a shot. I mean, what do you have to lose? If you try to hug somebody for longer than you normally would, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it'll go good. I mean, the other person at first might try to pull away or not understand what's going on, but you can explain to them and say, no, we should be hugging for longer than a second. There's a power in a hug. And although it could be awkward at first, that person will be like, oh, really? And then it'll be a domino effect. And hopefully more and more people will see the significance of a hug, the power of that hug. It's worth a shot. <laughs> I mean, the worst that can happen is someone thinks you're a little awkward or weird, but hopefully not. And you can try to explain to them why we should be hugging for longer because of that power that a hug can bring. <laughs> it's funny how things work out. You know, you can plan for something and sometimes or most times it doesn't go according to plan. And that's what happened today. But I went with it and I think it was amazing. There's that word again. <laughs> I guess the word of the day today for me is amazing. But and I'm going to say it again one more time. Have an amazing day. Have a blessed day. Be grateful. Always be grateful for this moment and smile. I'll talk to everybody soon. Have a good one.